the most straightforward answer that I have for you is work backwards. First, give as much as you can for free to get that credibility, to get that audience, to get that uh, gratitude of people. Mm -hmm. And once this resource has acquired lots of backlinks and is ranking well, you can start gating it little by little and see if people still reference it as the best resource. Welcome to the Smart Passive Income Podcast, where it's all about working hard now so you can sit back and reap the benefits later. And now your host, his two new dogs are named Jarvis and Jedi, Pat Flynn. All right, I just finished the interview with Tim from AHREFs. So you probably heard just a little clip from uh, the episode just now. But wow, I mean, I literally just got off the call and probably the most mind-blowing and likely one of the most valuable podcast episodes that you will ever hear. And this is in uh, regards to search engine optimization today. We talk about a lot of things that have changed since the last time he was on the show three years ago, because a lot has changed. But a lot of the principles remain the same, but we get into more specifics of what you can do today. I even get very specific with some things that we were trying to do, that we were told to do, that actually through the conversation today, I realized that maybe isn't the best thing to do. So a lot to uncover here. And again, just a huge shout out to Tim and the entire team at Ahrefs. If you don't know or have never heard of Ahrefs, it's a software. It's a tool that you can pop in your website into and you might have Google Search Console, right? Well, this is that times 100. Plus it gives you a lot of things related to your ranking and how it changes over time. You can track certain keywords. You can do backlink checks, not just on your own, but on your competitors' websites. I mean, it is the dashboard for all things search engine optimization, which I know can be very scary, but this episode is about simplifying that and taking the right approach. And we talk about so many, I mean, uh, this is just, uh, you're gonna love this so much. So again, ahrefs.com if you wanna check this out. But first, listen to the episode so you can get jazzed and actually get excited about search engine optimization and the approach that you could have for your website so that you can rank and get more search engine traffic, which is the best because it's free and it's uh, with the user intent behind it. Um, and it can, it can add up to a lot of dollars for you. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Tim, welcome back to the Smart Passive Income Podcast. Thanks for uh, joining us today again. Hey, Pat. Thanks a lot for inviting me again. I'm so happy to have you back on. In fact, the last time you were on, which was episode 364, which was literally three years ago. I mean, in the world of SEO, what is that like? It's like dog years, right? Seven times seven, 20. It's been like 21 <laughs> years since you've been on the show. Uh, I've had a ton of, I still actually get feedback from that episode because you were able to take this complicated thing called search engine optimization and simplify it for all of us. So first of all, thank you for that. And thank you for coming back. What's the world of SEO like today? Like, I know that's a big question, but has it changed much since three years ago? And then we'll get into the more details, but from a high level, what does SEO look like today? How do we rank on Google, et cetera? Yeah, I think from the top level, it's more of the same. Uh, all the fundamentals are still there. I still don't think that SEO is complicated. Well, at least SEO for an average website owner. We're not talking about people who have to do SEO for websites like Booking.com or Amazon.com. Uh, I mm -hmm. think it's more of the same. And I think Google is still trying their best to find the, the, the best content from all over the web and to show people uh, what deserves to, to rank at the top. So it's essentially, it's all about giving people the best information and being a credible source for this information. So if you were to boil down uh, how to succeed in SEO to a simple advice, that would be like, be the best source of information, be the most credible source of information, uh, and you'll be good. How does Google define what is best and what is credible? If we can write for that, then, or... You know, is it even just write anymore? Is it video? Is it podcasts? Like I know those are all a part of it too. Or is it, or is the written word still like king? So this is this is an amazing question, and uh, it it gets us right very deep into the topic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First of all, I think uh, Google is no longer a dominant force in search. Well, Google as in a search engine, not Google as a company, or should I sell say Alphabet because I believe their parent company right. is called Alphabet. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I'm sure like people can relate. If you need, for example, to look up some reviews of, uh, I know, Pokemon cards, 
uh, you would yeah. rather go and look on YouTube because you can actually see people uh, opening boxes, reviewing those cards, looking at them, discussing them. But when you search for those things for reviews of different products on Google, you don't really know if the people who wrote those articles ever touched those products themselves or they just went mm. to Amazon, looked up a few reviews from people on Amazon and quickly wrote their article. So yeah, I believe search is more kind of uh, fragmented now. People use different sites to search for different things. Uh, I think YouTube is very important for uh, both for, for businesses and for people who do this as a hobby, for people who, who are bloggers. Uh, for, for shopping, Amazon is, of course, I, I find myself starting my shopping-related, e-commerce-related searches on Amazon first, and then I would mm -hmm. try to, to search for local sites uh, and such. So, yeah, in that sense, yeah, a lot has changed in terms of uh, search engine optimization. You no longer think about Google only. Uh, and there were quite a few, uh, we're seeing a big trend that Google wants to keep people on their page, on the page of the search results. And they try to give more and more information on the search results, as opposed to uh, sending people to click on those search results and visit those websites. So they try to kind of aggregate some information and show it right in the search results. For me as a user, that is often very handy, very convenient, because when I'm sitting mm -hmm. with my friends at the bar and we're arguing about something, if it's true or not, uh, you do a search in Google and it displays an answer pretty much instantly. So you don't need to click on the website. You don't need to scroll to find where this particular question is being answered on the page. Uh, they show it to you right in the search results. But for website owners, uh, that's not a good thing, definitely, because you're not getting those clicks and it's harder for you to monetize your website which means it's harder for you to justify uh, spending all that time and effort into creating unique original content, into taking the, the stuff that you have in your head as a professional uh, onto a page, mm -hmm. because like, what do you get out of it if Google will just scrape it and display it in your search results uh, without giving you any value? So these are the, the main trends that, that I'm seeing in the past three years. Yeah, I mean, I almost feel like Google with the little drop down menus and definitions and other things that I would have on my page myself, I almost feel like Google's stealing from me, all right? They're getting advertising dollars, they're getting uh, watch time or people on their page still, and they're not coming to my site. So, so what do we do about that? I mean, I know that you can optimize for those, I think they're called snippets on Google, but is that even worth doing? I mean, where are people getting an ROI with search engine optimization today? So, yeah, there's, there's actually not much we could do about this other than growing our brands, investing into growing our brands so that people, like, like I said, I'm going to Amazon if I need shopping. Uh, you mm -hmm. should become an authority in a given field where people would want to know what you have to say about a certain topic or if they want to learn something, they would learn it. They would want to learn it from you specifically because they know that you are uh, a credible source of information. Uh, other than that, yeah, Google is just stealing traffic from everyone. Uh, I, I'll tell you a quick story about uh, our own website, about Hrefs. So we have invested into content marketing and SEO quite a bit. We, we eat our own dog food and we were generating lots and lots of search traffic to our website. And last year we noticed that our traffic has dropped quite sharply. And when we started mm -hmm. digging into it, like, did we do any like SEO mistakes or did we, I don't know, acquire some spammy backlinks that Google is punishing us for, or did we make some technical SEO issues which are preventing Google from ranking the pages of our website? Well, none of that. So we identified that there were three main reasons why we, who are quite experienced in SEO, uh, lost quite a bit of our search traffic. The first reason was that Google started displaying more answers to the questions uh, in those like featured snippets, knowledge panels, people also ask boxes and all that which effectively pushes down the organic search results. So mm -hmm. even like you may, you may still rank number one or number two, but if there's a people also ask box or like a knowledge panel above you, it pushes you down and people are less likely to click. They're more likely to stay on the search results and get their answer there. This was the first reason. We just, uh, we, we, we have, we track this, how many uh, of those different, we call them SERP features are being displayed for the keywords that we rank for. And we just saw that the, the amount of SERP features that Google started displaying for the 
for those keywords that we want to rank for is just going up, which means our traffic is going down. Uh, the yeah. second reason is that uh, some of our competitors are got more aggressive with advertising for the keywords where we rank nicely. Uh, and Google is displaying as many as four uh, advertisements before the That's organic crazy. search results. So four advertisements pushes you quite far below the fold. And if we're yeah. talking about mobile phones where you cannot like stretch your uh, advertisement horizontally, you have to do it vertically. You have to scroll with your thumb quite a bit until you get to the organic search results. And Google is trying to make their uh, ad ads undiscernible uh, from the organic search results. So people just start clicking ads more. And this is, this is understandable because Google makes their revenue from ads. So they are pretty much motivated to display more of those ads uh, and to funnel all those clicks to be paid clicks to get money from them as opposed to organic search mm -hmm. results. So this is the second reason why we saw we drop traffic, traffic because uh, our competitors thought that instead of uh, trying to outrank us organically, they might as well put some money and like display their content above us. And the third reason is we have content on the topics of SEO and digital marketing. And Google decided to create their own resource about search engine optimization and all that. And suddenly, Google's own research about search engine optimization, where they talk about those topics, is ranking number one for everything, effectively pushing all other sites down. So I don't know how to look at this, because on one hand, Google should potentially be the number one authority when it comes to search engine optimization because like we are optimizing content to be ranked on their platform and they know their platform the best but on the right. other hand many SEO professionals will be very skeptical about the advice that Google is giving us uh, that Google might want to mislead us and they might not mislead us for evil reasons uh, maybe they don't want to disclose certain information because they are afraid that people will start abusing it so there are like two sides of this coin. But yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what I'm seeing in SEO is that more ads, more featured snippets, and more consolidation towards the big brands. Because it's not just Google who stole traffic from the SEO community with their resource. We're seeing that this with other big websites where like uh, websites, for example, HubSpot recently acquired uh, a media company, The Hustle. Uh, and we mm. see lots of consolidation where big brands are using their resources and using their big big websites and big brands to consolidate more content and effectively uh, push all this smaller competition away. So uh, it gets a bit more challenging these days to to get search traffic naturally. Well, number one, you're not making me like Google very much. Uh, <laughs> number two, it makes me wonder in the position that that puts us, especially smaller brands, ones with small marketing teams, or maybe we're just solopreneurs uh, spending time writing articles or, or trying to gain traffic. I mean, we have knowledge, we have expertise, we should be trusted, but there are things that are getting in the way. Is it even worth putting our time and resources into that anymore? I have an answer to that, but I'd love to hear uh, your answer. Is it even worth trying to rank high for certain keywords anymore, despite all that? So first of all, I was obviously quite pessimistic uh, and critical of Google and what they're doing. But to be fair, there's still a lot of opportunity uh, to, to rank and to get search traffic. Because no matter mm -hmm. how, how many like big websites there are and how many of those SERP features and ads Google will add to their search results, there are still lots, there's still lots of opportunity. And every day, uh, new trends are emerging. And if you're the first one to, to cover the emerging trends and become a resource for them, uh, you would be getting this traffic. So yeah, uh, Google is stealing stealing traffic away from uh, website owners, that's for sure, but there's still plenty of opportunity. And the fact that search traffic is uh, essentially free, so you create this content, you put it out there, and people can come back to it for years to come, uh, this mm -hmm. still has lots of value. And I... I am convinced that SEO is still an amazing channel for, for audience building, for uh, customer acquisition, for sales and all that. And even though I, I uh, lamented on the fact that we lost lots of our search traffic, our website is still uh, getting like over a million visits per month from search. So it's not that they killed it all. Uh, it's just they took away some of it. So there's still plenty of opportunity and by no means 
I want to dissuade people from paying attention to SEO and from being conscious uh, of the content that they are creating and how they optimize it uh, for ranking in Google. Mm. Thank you for that. My answer was going to be somewhat similar. We are getting loads of search engine traffic still. And despite all that, uh, we rank really high for how to start a podcast, for example. But when you go there, you see all these ads, you see all these snippets and a couple websites have outranked us. We're like in the number three spot right now. Yet we still get thousands of people coming in per month and it's free uh, traffic. And so like I'm complaining because I used to get maybe more free traffic, but I'm still getting free traffic. And not only that, like you said, the articles that are written on the website, they shouldn't be just for bringing new people in. They should be to provide value to the people who are already there. They should be providing value to maybe the people who come from YouTube, find yourself and find you on your website and then see the articles that you have. It's for them as well. And this is this is like you said, it's it's about brand. It's not just about the page you create. It's about the brand that you're creating in whole, which is which is really, really important. So I, I appreciate that insight. So, OK. SEO still worthwhile, free traffic, amazing. What are the key things that we could do on our web pages to optimize as highly as we can? I mean, back the last time you chatted, I know it was about, you know, and everybody says this, you know, providing, providing value, like you said, creating the best stuff. Uh, you had mentioned something earlier today that was uh, new and that is like being the most trusted resource. What are the specific things we can do on our page to meet all that criteria to at least give ourselves the best chance? Yeah, that's that's a great question. First of all, the lowest hanging fruit for any website owner is to simply be conscious, be aware if the, the pages or rather the topics of the pages that they have on their website are something that people are actively searching for. In other words, doing keyword research. For example, if you sounds have... Sounds obvious, right? Yeah, yeah, it sounds obvious, but a lot of people are not doing it. Uh, for example, right. if if you have, uh, I don't know, a pool cleaning company uh, and you have a bunch of different services that you do in terms of pool cleaning, I don't know, fixing the pumps and blah, blah, blah. I'm not really familiar with pool cleaning to be very specific with this. Uh, but the thing is, people would create a page, call it our services, and just list all the services there in one bulleted list and call it a day. So no, like what, what should people look for? if they're looking for pool cleaning services, like if the title of, the, of your page is our services, what you should be doing instead, you should create a dedicated page with the name of each service that you're doing. So if someone would search for, how do I fix my pump to like, or something is stuck in my pool pump or whatever, or like how to clean the water or the water in the pool got murky, you have a page mm -hmm. about it. You have a dedicated page so people can land on it. First of all, Google Google can understand that you have an answer to this question that someone is asking in Google. They can refer people to your page. So the lowest hanging fruit is to simply be conscious uh, of what kind of content you have on your website and is it something that people would be searching for in Google and is your page properly answering that query? And it should be kind of one, one page per one topic. Don't, don't try to squeeze everything onto one page and hope that one page would rank for everything. Uh, so this is the mm. lowest hanging fruit that every website owner should be aware of and should be absolutely doing on their website because otherwise they're just simply missing out. In terms of being a credible source, there's a lot of um, discussion in the SEO world about this being a true factor or not. Like people are debating how would Google know if you, for example, if you are a real dentist or not to be talking about some dental surgeries and stuff, or if you just uh, made a fake personality, wrote it in the author bio that you're like have a PhD or like have some uh, awards or something, and Google will, will kind of read that and think that you're a real person. Uh, but essentially, it boils down to, to having links to your website. Because if you are an authority in your space, other people in your space should know you. And they should reference yeah. your work in some way. So, for example, if you it, let's go back to that pool cleaning website, uh, if you do a good job, if you're a, if you're an authority, and if you create content on your website, uh, when people in your local community on the local forum would be discussing their problems with the pools, someone would put a link to your website because they used your services, they enjoyed it, you like you helped them with their issue, and they would reference you. So this is how mm -hmm. Google knows that you are an authority because other people mention your website, mention your content. Some people also think that even mentions of your brand 
even they even if those mentions are not linked to your website uh do influence this for example uh, my name or your name uh people mention us in articles all around uh, the internet and not necessarily they would link to our website so google might might see that okay this article is written by team solo and we saw the name team solo on i don't know 100 websites so this guy must be real of course this can be game because you can create mm -hmm. a, a thousand websites you can put a fake persona there but those signals can can in influence this uh another thing is that google is google seems to be very conscious of uh, user behavior factors and they are using human raters to rate their search results so probably they also look at the page and uh, look at like how your website is structured is it good looking because if it looks like it, it's from 90s people can trust this people wouldn't put their credit card uh on a page that looks like it was created 20 years ago so if you're investing effort in your website if it is clean uh if it is good looking if it works fast and well uh those things also contribute to your kind of authority but the main thing uh is being the authority not not trying to fake it if you are an authority you are an authority like i i i even struggle to to explain this but i think the the concept is more or less understandable that's super handy i mean there's so many things i want to cover really quick but thank you first of all you had mentioned that instead of just kind of bullet points of each item have them all separate on separate dedicated pages where you go in depth with each of them. We have a page that we tried optimizing on our site at SPI for affiliate marketing. And we were told from several sources, for example, that um, you know we should take every question that people have about affiliate marketing and put it on that one page, have it be a pillar piece of content. And it's not bullet points of just each of those things, it's actual headlines of each of those questions and then a really detailed answer, but the page is maybe, you know, five, 6,000 words in length. And I've seen Neil Patel share information about uh, search engine rankings versus the correlation of the length of those articles and such. Um, can you specify a little bit more about that strategy, long page and answering all those questions in detail, still providing value versus maybe what if we were to, instead of 10 questions on one page, we had 10 pages that each answered those questions well is one better than the other yeah uh, absolutely there's one thing that i forgot to mention when talking about all that and this thing is called search search intent or searcher intent uh different people call it differently basically what it refers to is what do people expect to get when they search for this particular keyword so affiliate marketing what do people yep. expect do they even expect a long form article maybe if you had a gated course where they leave their email and they get uh, like a full course on affiliate marketing to their email is what they ex what more of these searchers expect what would satisfy their search so a quick story of uh, our own website we had a landing page for uh covering one of our functionalities which is backlink checker hrefs has a back, uh, backlink checker as one of our yeah, tools great. uh thank you and we had a kind of uh regular feature page we were explaining so we have this tool it does this and that here are some screenshots here are some statistics blah 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 and we were ranking number eight for backlink checker and despite all the optimizations we were optimizing speed we were optimizing uh, the images on our website we were optimizing the text on our website nothing was help we were even building more backlinks to this page nothing was helping us and then we noticed that the pages that were ranking us were free tools so the searcher intent, when they were looking for backlink checker, seemed to be that they wanted a free tool which would work for them right away. They didn't want to learn that there's some software that has backlink checker functionality, but you have to pay for it mm. to use it. No, they would rather click on something that says free backlink checker, use it now, use it today. So what we did, we, we made almost no changes to our landing page. We just added an input form, like enter your website and like see my backlinks. Almost immediately in the course of the week, this page shot up to number one. Uh, and I think it, right now it's one of our most popular pages in terms of search traffic. It's generating tons of tons of visitors to our website. It is ranking number one mm. since the time we made this change and no one is able to outrank us because Hrefs is also the authority on backlinks. But even though we were authority on backlinks, 
without nailing the search intent, without giving people what they want, uh, we couldn't track. So this is the first thing. It, 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 it's not necessarily a question of should I make my page longer? Should I make my page shorter? Should I, should I answer all those questions on the same page? Or should I create some kind of hub where people would land on kind of an introductory page? Like this is an int introductory course to uh, affiliate marketing. Click on chapter one and then you send them to, to subsequent pages. Or if this is like a video course uh, that is gated where they have to leave their email and get it. Or if this, this is a course where like all the videos are already published on the same page. You have to, like, the, the only way to know is to experiment with it, to, to publish a page and see if, uh, if people like it, if people enjoy it. And another important thing is, of course, getting backlinks because uh, someone is already ranking for affiliate marketing and mm -hmm. they might not necessarily be nailing the search intent. So people might not necessarily like what they're seeing on that page for affiliate marketing, uh, but they have acquired so many backlinks historically that Google thinks that this is the best possible page. So if you are a brand new blogger, I would say that it would be nearly impossible for you to rank for this kind of keyword. But for you, because you have uh, an audience, you have lots of people, uh, bloggers, marketers, uh, podcast pod podcasters following you. And if you create a really amazing resource and you promote it within your audience, people will start referencing it and people will start referencing your page. And you, you, you need to uh, answer the question, why? Why mm. is your resource better than what's already there? Why did you bother to create it other than to, to rank and get search traffic for it? What kind of additional value your, your research adds, adds to the world? Like, be honest with you. Can you create something better than the top three search results? Can you, can you like, give people better tips? Can you teach them something they... they cannot see from those top pages. And if you can, if you can provide something on top of it, uh, and then you have an audience who that would help amplify this, that would link to it, that would talk about it, that would retweet it, Google will notice it. Because what, what we've also seen is that when you publish something and it gains traction on social media, in email newsletters, and picks up some links from like roundups and such, Google sees that activity and they put your page on the top of the search results to test it. Like, okay, we're seeing that this, this page is getting lots of traction on social media and blah, blah, blah. Let's try to put it for the relevant keyword at the top of the search results and see how searches will react. And if they put it there and people will react positively, people will stay on the page, people uh, won't uh, refine their searches and click something else, uh, your page might stay there. And then uh, what we call a vicious cycle of SEO will kick in because the top ranking pages tend to acquire backlinks because they always get traffic. So if you rank number one, mm. a certain amount of people is visiting your page every day, every week, every month. And a fraction of those people, some of those people will then link to you because this is the, the best resource that they discovered on the topic. So naturally, when they need to talk about affiliate marketing, they would reference a resource that was ranking number one on Google, which they found a week ago. But if you manage to put your page out there even for a while and people start start using it, start liking it, and they will link back to it, your page will secure its position in the search results. Uh, and then gradually you can get to the top. So this is how it works. But yeah, the, the most important thing is still to answer why and how your resource contributes some additional value to the world on top of what's already there. Dude, you are a goldmine. <laughs> I'm just saying, wow. Okay, follow-up question that I think might be on people's minds. It's on my mind. I looked up uh, Backlink Checker. Ahrefs is number one. Well done. Like you said, fantastic. By the way, everybody go check out Ahrefs because it's amazing. And if you want to see what keywords you need to be ranking for and have, we use the rank tracker to see how we're performing. And I actually go in there every day to see if we've moved up, we've moved down, what competitors have come in, et cetera. Go check it out, Ahrefs. Anyway, backlink checker, it's free. Free backlink checker by Ahrefs. If I provide a really great resource that people can use and they talk about and it gets me to rank number one, it's likely going to be a lot of free value that yeah. I'm sharing. How do I know where to draw the line between what do I give away for free, yet I still want customers coming in, I still want students coming to my courses, you still want people to sign up for Ahrefs. How do you not give away everything so that 
when it comes time to you know make a sale, you, you've already given everything away? Uh, this is an amazing question. And the most straightforward answer that I have for you is work backwards. First, give as much as you can for free to get that credibility, to get that audience, to get that uh, gratitude of people. Mm -hmm. And once this resource has acquired lots of backlinks and is ranking well, you can start gating it little by little and see if people still reference it as the best resource. So that's the first answer. Another answer is that by like what happens to me, for example, I created a, a course that is called Blogging for Business. Uh, it, it used to, to sell for like $800, but now we also have it for free. We opened it back in the day when COVID hit and all people were staying at home and the companies were supporting people by opening their educational resources for free. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I created this course some four years ago or something like that. And uh, four years later, I understand that I have so much more to say about blogging and content marketing four years later compared to what I shared in this course. That course is still good. It still has lots of good ideas. I still see people on Twitter and people in communities referencing this course whenever someone is asking uh, for content marketing advice. But I understand that I can easily create a follow-up course on the same topic and sell it because there's so much additional value. So what I'm saying is that once you put out lots of value for free, a year later on the same topic, regardless of what kind of value you added, you'll have more unique ideas. You'll have more interesting insights that you can add that can be gated. So this resource would work as a lead magnet for you. And there's something that works towards your brand, towards your audience. Uh, and then you provide additional value on top of that. So I, I don't think there's, there's a big issue with giving away too much for free. I would agree with that. And even when I give away everything for free, because you know me and what we do at SPI, we often give away so much. People still look for ways to pay us back. Yeah. Even though we give away everything for free, they say, hey, do you have an affiliate link for this? Or I'll make sure to click on your affiliate links. Or if you do any one-on-one -on -one coaching, let me know because I love all the value you've already provided. So there's always going to be new ways to generate income, especially if you've, like I always talk about, serve first. And so I, I appreciate that. Um, that anchor there. You had mentioned human reviews at Google. Do they literally have people? I mean, there's mil billions of websites. Are there people that actually go out there from Google? Like, they, like I'm just imagining a person at Google all day just clicking like, oh, yeah, that website's good. Yes, yes. Are they like, what are they doing? Do, do you have any insight on how that works? And yeah, I think as far as I know, that is not even a secret. So uh, I believe once in a while, Google update something they call human rater guidelines or something. So I think if you Google for something like uh, Google human rater guidelines, uh, you'll find an actual document uh, that they're sending to people whose job is to open search results and rate uh, the search results by a number of criteria that, that is outlined in this document. And uh, some people in the SEO space, that there is a pretty long document. I think it's 90 pages or something. And some people in the SEO space, whenever Google updates this document, uh, they would go read the whole thing from start to finish and they would publish takeaways, which kind of give us hints uh, in terms of where Google is going or how they want to kind of gauge the, the quality and credibility of different websites. Uh, to give you an update on the number of pages, Tim, there are 172 pages. Oh my God. <laughs> of this thing now copyright 2021 october 19 um i definitely do not want to go through all of this but i can see that there are indeed humans that go through this and and use the certain guidelines they're highly trained apparently so that's really interesting i think without reading those 172 72 pages the main takeaway can that we can distill from this is that google is trying to optimize for humans Mm. This is the most important thing. So Google is trying to use Google uh, human raters to understand if humans like what they're seeing. And they, they give people, of course, they give them uh, some input. Like if, if the website, had, because people are not necessarily aware if they're looking at a good website or bad website. But I, I believe they ask them questions like, uh, is this the kind of website you would feel comfortable giving your credit card information to? This is something I mentioned previously. 
So Google is mm-hmm. trying to optimize for people, which means that SEO professionals or rather website owners who want their, the content of their website to show up in Google, they should also optimize for people. They should make the, the website experience uh, pleasant, fast, convenient, and clear for people. And when I say clear, this again refers back to if I search for some issue with pool cleaning, I have to land on a page where I can, without much struggle, get the information I need, whether it is like book an appointment or whether I need some information to do it myself, whatever my search intent is, uh, I need to get this information as quick as possible. And again, back to your question about making long pages, uh, I often like to quote I don't remember who this quote belongs to, but basically people don't like to read in a sense that if you could plug a cord right into your brain and upload the information of some book or a website right into your brain without, without, yeah, you would do this. Like, why would I spend time reading books if I could just upload the information? So making your pages longer is not necessarily a good idea because people will just open this page. They will see like 10,000 words there. And they would close it because they don't have time to read it because another page on the same topic might promise to give them the answer to their question in 500 words. So they will just Mm. save their time and read the 500 words page and Google because they're tracking the behavioral factors. They would say, okay, so this shorter article actually seems to be satisfying uh, our searches more than this super long post. So let's rank it higher. So it's not about making your posts longer. It's about giving people what they want as fast as you can. Uh, it's like if it, it feels so different than when I started SEO in yeah, 2008. Absolutely. And it was, it, was, it was keywords, number yeah. one. And it was a domain name that matched that keyword. That's why I have passive income in the domain name. That's literally why it's there. Uh, and then like just have as much content as possible. But... You're right. When I teach people about, for example, email marketing and creating lead magnets back in the day, the lead magnets that were longer were better because it was information that wasn't available yes. anywhere else. Now information's available everywhere. And in fact, there's too much of it. And yeah. the better lead magnets now are the ones that are a single page that could get a person the same result as the 72 page one that we had. And I'm imagining it's the same kind of conversation in SEO today. Yeah. Can I just also mention that uh, I'm so uh, kind of enjoying the fact that now I'm giving you some information about SEO because back in the day, I was actually learning SEO from you and the first websites (laughs) that I've created and the first SEO advice (laughs) that I've learned is from you following your case studies. Uh, And now I'm actually giving you information, updates on what is happening in SEO. So we've come full circle. We have come for a full circle, although I have to apologize because those ways don't work anymore. And, <laughs> and you're, you, you know, I mean, those were, those were the niche site dual days, yes. right? Where there were private link networks and certain things that you could do that were, you know, that worked and, and, and gamed the system a little bit, yeah. but, uh, you know, wasn't optimized for human. Okay, so it's different right now. And that's why this conversation is really important. So, you know, the other thing that's really important is that you have tools that you can help people with. And Ahrefs is a beautiful tool and we use it all the time. And and it also helps us discover some insight on certain pages on our website that we know are important that are maybe performing slow. And like you said earlier, like make your pages fast. Okay, now we have a list of pages that we can optimize and we use it to guide our uh, SEO. And so I want to thank you for what you all do at Ahrefs and uh, Igor, who we've been working with as well. And I just want to say, like, every time you come on, man, you just make it sound so easy because it actually can be. Like, why are we making it so complicated? Yeah. I don't know. In a way, uh, my message for the past few years has been that SEO is not really something you should be uh, focusing on or anxious about. Like I said, it is much more important to to be providing unique value like i said if you want to rank for affiliate marketing you have to give people the reason why is your resource better like maybe other resources are outdated or you have a fresh look or you have some connections in the space where you're giving people some insider information or something so it is much more important these days to have unique information that no one else has 
And SEO is kind of, it is integrated in your business. It is integrated in your act of creation, in, in the acts of content mm. marketing, in the acts of building a business. I absolutely think that anyone that who has a website should study the basics of SEO and know like how backlinks help their website, uh, how to search for keywords, how to know what, what your audience is searching for how to make sure that your page is optimized and it is addressing the, the right search intent for this keyword. So those basics, those fundamentals, I absolutely think that anyone should know it, but like you shouldn't be afraid of SEO. You shouldn't think that it's some technical dark magic and you'll have to spend years learning it. No, it is much more important to be expert in your particular field. For example, if you, mm. if you put me with like, I don't know, 15 years of experience in SEO, uh, at the helm of some dental website, I would actually struggle to 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 make it rank because I'm not an expert in dental things. I would have to study the the actual industry to to become a good SEO. And I I actually been through that because uh, before joining Ahrefs, I was in charge of a photography website, and I'm not a photographer. I don't know anything about photography, but I was trying to 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 make that to, to grow traffic to this website and i was struggling i was struggling to find people who would create content that would resonate with other photographers meanwhile mm. and i had a team i had some resources given to me because that that website was part of like a bigger company meanwhile i saw i saw individual bloggers just photographers sitting like in their homes without any resources apart from their brain creating amazing articles and getting so much traction in the industry and getting natural backlinks and getting lots of traffic and like selling their courses and stuff, uh, which is when I realized, no, like if I would be doing something online, I have to do it in this space, in the industry where I'm naturally interested in. So I will, I will become an expert in that particular industry. So it is much more important these days to be an expert in your industry and study the fundamentals of SEO, uh, other than like, compared to the other way around, where you spend right. all your time studying SEO, but you're an average, you have average knowledge of your industry at best. Mm. That's a great way to end the show in a, in a massive lesson. So Tim, thank you again so much. I'll talk a little bit more about Ahrefs in just a sec, so stick around, but Tim, thank you. Thank you to your team. And I look forward to catching up with you maybe in the next two or three years, but it's likely going to be more of the same kind of stuff. But, Absolutely. Let's uh, make this a tradition. Or we'll talk about the metaverse, uh, <laughs> SE, like, you know, metaverse uh, optimization or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me. All right. I hope you enjoy that interview as much as I did. That was with Tim from Ahrefs. I highly recommend you check out Ahrefs. Uh, they're not sponsoring this episode. They just I just wanted him to come on, but I have to tell you about this tool. Um, Ahrefs.com. And they have a, a webmaster's tool similar to Google Webmaster Tools, but again, like a hundred times better. And uh, immediately it's going to allow you to have an audit for your website. So whether it's new or old, pop your website in there. Actually, the uh, webmaster tools part is free and you're able to see how your website performs, not just like how it ranks, but the things that you can do to improve and sort of all the, all these other, I mean, it's just so great. And the information learned today was just so valuable. Highly recommend you come back to the webpage to check out all the links in the show notes and everything we talked about, which you can find at smartpassiveincome.com slash session 571. Again, smartpassiveincome.com slash session 571 and check out a h r e f s dot com and you can find tim swolo that's t i m s u o l o so s u o l o on twitter and just let us know what you think i hope you enjoy this as much as i again enjoyed recording it and it's just been absolutely fantastic and if you're watching me right now sorry i'm on the screen right now uh making sure i spelled his name correctly but let me come back at you there we go and uh, again, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already, because we have a lot more content like this coming your way. Very specific, very uh, much what you need to know right now. So hit that subscribe button. And uh, thank you so much. Show notes at smartpassiveincome.com slash session 571. And if you haven't yet done so, check out spipro.com. Apply, because we let people in quarterly. We'd love to see you in there, spipro.com. Cheers, peace out. And as always, Team Flynn for the win. Thanks for listening to the Smart Passive Income podcast at smartpassiveincome.com. 
I'm your host, Pat Flynn. Our senior producer is Sarah Jane Hess. Our series producer is David Grabowski. And our executive producer is Matt Gartland. Sound and video editing by Sean West Media. The Smart Passive Income Podcast is a production of SPI Media. We'll catch you in the next session.